Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Bun Med where we discuss concise medical knowledge you can fit inside of a bun. Today we will be going through part 2 of the ECG series, um, looking through a systematic approach to interpreting the ECG. So this is the systematic checklist um, that I would use when approaching an ECG and it's quite helpful because then it means you don't miss anything important. So the first thing to look at is the heart rate. So how fast is this patient's heart rate? Remember that the normal heart rate is 60 to 100 and we can use an ECG to identify how fast the heart rate is going. Now, if you look at the ECG strip, you can see that there's a bunch of different numbers and letters across it. So for example, we've got 1, 2, 3, V1, V2, V3. Um, for calculating the heart rate, the most important um, strip to use is what's known as a rhythm strip and this is usually um, a longer version of lead 2 um, and it's essentially the ECG taken over 10 seconds. So remember that with heart rate this is taken over a minute so all you need to do um, is to count the number of QRS complexes in other words um, each heartbeat um, in 10 seconds and then you multiply it by 6 which gives you the heart rate over a minute. So in this example, there are 12 um, QRS complexes in 10 seconds. Uh, multiplying by, by 6, you get a heart rate of 72, which is within the normal limits. The second way that you can calculate the heart rate is to look at the number of large squares between each of the QRS complexes and then divide that number by 300. So in this case, if we look, we've got one, two, three, four large squares. So if we divide 300 by four, that gives us a heart rate of 75. So you can see that there isn't a massive difference between um, the two methods and each one is completely acceptable um, as long as you pick one and um, you're able to use it properly. So that's how you calculate the heart rate, which is the first thing that you should do in an ECG. The next thing is to look at the heart rhythm and this is fairly straightforward. So is it a regular heart rhythm or a irregular heart rhythm? So looking at this example again, we can see that the gap between each QRS complex is pretty much the same. So this means that this is a regular heart rhythm. On, on the other side, we have a irregular heart rhythm. So you can see that the gaps between each of the QRS complexes um, is completely different and is quite random. Um, this is a condition called atrial fibrillation, which you'll learn about later um, in more detail. The next thing to look at is the ECG axis. So with the ECG axis, it's important to refer back to how the heart sits in the body and how the chest leads work, or in other words, how the ECG leads work. So um, when you are looking at the ECG axis, uh, a normal ECG axis will essentially be positive in leads 1 and also positives, positive in lead 2. If a patient has left axis deviation, then the lead will actually be positive in lead 1 and negative in lead two, and uh, in lead two, and the way you remember this is that the leads are effectively leaving each other. So, in other words, left axis deviation. And what that means is effectively um, the if you look at the left side of the heart here, and this is the right side. Uh, what it means is that there is some sort of pathology on this left side of the heart. So for example, going back to our previous example, it might be a bit thicker than normal. And what that will do is that it will actually kind of suck up that electrical activity and electrical current. So it, if it's sucking it towards this bit here, which is lead one, then it's going to mean that lead one stays positive. But of course, it means that lead two, will, uh, which is this one here, will actually get less of that current and so it appears negative. And then if we look at the right axis deviation, you can see that's the opposite. So lead one is actually negative and lead two is positive. And the two leads are reaching for each other. So again, if we go back to our analogy of the heart being thicker than normal, what will happen is that the current will actually be 
sort of sucked towards this side here. And so it will uh, potentiate lead 2, and the current being um, taken away from lead 1 will therefore cause it to be negative. You don't need to worry about why it happens too much, but it's important to recognize um, what left axis deviation looks like, so the, the leads are, are leaving each other, and in right axis deviation they are reaching for each other. So thank you very much for watching the video, we hope you found it helpful. Please do look out for the rest of the ECG series on our YouTube channel, and if you found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you when we can. Thank you.